So um, Rezwan, you were asking me about um, the purpose of recording these videos. And uh, yeah. back in December, I got this idea of going around and uh, asking people uh, what they thought about our, re our plans to return people to the moon in 2024. And more importantly, not so much just about the, their plans to turn people, you know, send people to the moon in 2024, but also when they think about the future of humanity, what, what do they see? Is it a hopeful future? Future? Is it one that's inclusive of everybody? Is it one where we're expanding out into the rest of the universe and discovery and adventure and, you know, abundance and dynamicism? Uh, and then also if they would have any personal interest in going to space. Those are, those are what I kind of ask about. But this is mainly more of a personal development project, learning how to, uh, making sure that I'm talking to at least the one other human being a day, because I, I was working from home before this COVID-19 thing. And I was like, I need some way to force myself to get out there and talk to people. So I thought it would be good from that standpoint. And then uh, recording them, it's good for my own self in order to remember the conversations. I've done about 220 so far, and uh, I've learned a lot from them, but some of the things I've learned, I may have forgotten, so it'd be nice to go to review them. And then some of the things that people were telling me, I may not have had an impact on me the first time, but if I review them, then I could see something. And then I also see this project as being like a time capsule as I feel like the 2020s are gonna be really a, a transition moment for us to branch out into the rest of the solar system. And I think, I imagine a high schooler in 2050 on the moon having to do a research paper for what were people thinking of before we started going out into space in a real way. And then they would be able to use these videos to in their high school project. So that that's sort of, I know it's like way out there, but in the back of my mind, that's what I've been thinking. Uh, Nathan, it's nice that somehow I'm also working the same things. And uh, you are like, I don't know the, how much time you have taken for it, but uh, I'm also doing the interviews on Facebook and it's not about the same topic. It's... Yes. Sorry. <laughs> it was outside. Oh, no worries. So, I don't know, actually, uh, out, uh, different topics on different personalities. So, I have conducted about 260 interviews so far. Uh, it's about 110 hours video. I think I'm so about the same is about level. Uh, because uh, my shortest interview was like 30 seconds. And my longest interview was uh, three hours and 30 minutes. And, um, but most of them been at lasting between like 30 to 45 wow. minutes. <laughs> 30 seconds interview, what do you mean by it? <laughs> okay, so um, my project is to interview one person per day and uh, not the same person twice. And I, I really prefer to interview, um, you know, maybe people I haven't met yet. So, it was like late on the day, I was like, had asked a few people and I haven't figured out how to talk about this project so it doesn't sound like a scam. You know, it's like, hey, I'd like to interview you for my project. They're like, why do you want to interview me? What do you want? Do you need some money? You know, is it you're trying to rob me? You know, I mean, this type of thing, right? <laughs> you know, so it's like, uh, because the project, I mean, we're here in America, I don't know what it's like in Pakistan, but here in America, people are constantly trying to sell you something, are trying to scam you, are trying to, uh, you know, uh, get something from you. And so whenever you go up to somebody and you're, you ask them about this innocent sounding project, uh, and especially whenever you look like me, uh, you know, they're like, man, uh, he must be trying to get something. There's some trick here, you know? So it's like difficult. But anyway, uh, so on that day, <laughs> I had asked like maybe 20 different people and, uh, you know, all of them said no. And finally, you know, I, I ran to this guy. He's like, yeah, uh, I can interview, but it has to be really quick. And so I ran through my three questions really quick and, and I, I was good for the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, in Pakistan, it's also a perception that there is nothing free, but most of the time people sort out that uh, 
there are some volunteer work as well. Uh, however, I usually uh, met some people uh, that uh, are uh, conscious about ceremony. Uh, like uh, recently, I have texted a lady. Uh, she was the owner of a school. So I tried to ask her about the interview that I am going to conduct your interview. Uh, she said that might be uh, she, she uh, was thinking about promotion or something like that. So I said that no, I'm not going to promote you. I just want to take perspective of positive people during this situation. So I'm just learning for it. So she said, uh, how much you will charge? So I said, yes, I'm charging and it's uh, $200. She said, okay, I'm not interested. <laughs> then I said, <laughs> then I said, please have a look on my profile. I have conducted about 250 interviews so far. So all these are my volunteer work. I'm just learning from the people. She was so happy. And uh, then she given, gave me the time as well. And then she referred me a lot of people that he's the guy who's doing interviews and he's very nice and tried to connect with him and try to do work with him. We are the team and all those stuff. So it all happened. That's a, that's a happy story. Exactly. It happens sometimes. It does. And uh, you know, the other side of it is, so I've been doing these interviews and, and telling them to like my uh, friends and family and they're like, oh wow, you know, you can make some money with that. I'm like, you're completely missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's all about that, you know, it's just like, I, I was thinking, uh, you know, like these great religious leaders who started like, uh, you know, uh, like, I was just thinking, you know, I come from a Christian background, right? So I, I was thinking, what if we wrote uh -huh. like a story where like, uh, you know, Jesus is out there trying to um, spread uh, the message of um, we should do good to each other and, you know, redemption and all that. And the, his, his friends and family are like, hey, you know, you can really make money at this, you know, and, <laughs> you know, just trying to illustrate <laughs> that, you know, I mean, you, actually are... money is a really bad reason to do anything. Uh, money is is how you figure out how to do things that should be done regardless, <laughs> in my opinion. So. We are living in a materialistic world, so a lot of things are attached to money. So every person is searching about the money and thinking to attach every emotion and every value with the money. Yeah, and I think it robs us of uh, the reality of life. I mean... Like, for example, just looking at nature, you know, um, uh, like lizards, uh, you know, just around the yard uh, trying to catch a bug. I mean, it's so fascinating, right? I mean, it's just like, uh, uh, and it's like worth watching too. It's just like, uh, but then you go and talk to somebody. It's like, well, why would you, why would you watch that? And, you know, how can you make money with that? It's like, no, it's like, it's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, Nathan, do you I, know do you know Rihan? I, I I met him once. He came to Houston. He came to Houston. I think about oh. four years ago, five years ago, and it was during Ramadan. Um. So, uh, and my friend was sponsoring the dinner. Uh. So he had invited me, and so I went, and um, I got to. Uh, meet Rehan there and Rehan, you know, he's he you meet him and he's like tries to grab onto you as much as he can, right? He, he's like taking a selfie and posting pictures and what have you. And at that time, I was really trying to learn Hindi, you know, and, um, mm. uh, and so I, I had spent about a decade trying to learn to, um, you know, speak and understand and read and write Hindi. And uh, uh, I, I since kind of uh, given up on that because, you know, sometimes you find you, you have natural talents in certain things, and sometimes you find you have natural handicaps of other things. And language is something I have a natural <laughs> handicap. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I know Rayhan. And then, yeah, you know, with you. this project, uh, I was looking for people to interview. So uh, he was on my friends list. And then, um, you know, he was able to con connect me with a lot of other people. And so that's, that's been really good. 
about two to three nights before uh, he has connected my interview and he was saying the same thing like i have connected nathan and you have connected his interview and we have to talk and we have learned the net from nathan and he is doing an amazing job or something like that i think it's uh, just important to get out there and talk to each other you know that's like the foundation learning that you know people exactly. are people people are mobs or you know nameless faces and you know i mean everybody's trying to figure out how to get through their day how to get food on their table how to find their place in society and their place in life trying to figure out what what's right and you know how to become better and you know they have their their failings you know they they want to do these things but then they feel tired they get distracted or they get what have you you know I mean, it's like everybody <laughs> we're all the same so nathan why you we gap all the time whenever it's um, night or day well with this whole covid-19 thing i kind of uh have got a haircut <laughs> You have so, beautiful hair. Why you are heading? But uh, so uh, it, it it saves the it doesn't fall in my face if I I uh, do that. <laughs> I, I normally keep my hair shorter, but I haven't gotten a haircut since February uh, because I just trying to. It's looking awesome. Uh, you are having some James Bond look. Oh, <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, what? what started with your interview like uh you know i mean i guess first off it might be good for you to say a few words about yourself uh, that little introduct introduction yeah um nathan i'm a teacher by profession and if i go more specifically i'm a teacher trainer of pedagogical skills at a technical vocational training authority here in punjab state and uh, i'm teaching uh, teachers and uh, when there is no training i usually conduct classes for higher level about uh, high secondary school and intermediate level of the students and i usually uh, teach them about workshop texts that's totally a technical subject so i have done my masters in technical education and then i have done my masters in philosophy it's called mphil mean 18 years of education here in pakistan and uh, now i'm seeking uh, about phd trying to enroll in it uh, moreover i'm uh, doing uh, these interviews nowadays and i'm trying to learn from the people around the world that's awesome um uh, what are some things that you've learned that you uh, that surprised you uh, in pakistan there are a lot of myths a lot of misconceptions about different countries different religions about uh, different persons so when i talk to these people i come to know that uh, most of the time people are not concerned with the countries with religions with uh, uh, their identity people are concerned with their official matters like what are you doing that is my concern not about what you do for your uh, religion for your beliefs where do you live what does they do for you it's not my matter of concern so i learned these things that uh, those successful people who are doing their job only they are not concerned with the state not concerned with the religion not concerned with any um, uh, color or any biasness so they are totally free from all these things and these are somehow misconceptions myths in pakistan that we have to deal with Yeah, a misconception is really difficult uh because they're usually rooted in in things that get repeated and heard and repeated and heard and um you know they're just assumed to be fact. Uh and it, you know it's everything from about people, from about religions, about countries, uh to even something as simple as um you know eating like uh breakfast is is the most important meal of the day is is what i've been told all my life and so i believe it but my son who study nutrition is like you know actually breakfast isn't good for you so i i don't know <laughs> oh. so, but i mean who knows so I, like, i'm the, i'm surprised listen i'm surprised well, listen that I, i breakfast is not good for you either people are saying that breakfast is must for you 
Well, and maybe it's different for everybody and, and maybe he's still investigating uh, that. But I the point is, is that um, when you hear something so much, you just accept it as true and you don't actually ask, how do we know is it true? Why is it true? Um, you know, could we test to see if it's true? Is there something else that's better? You know, I mean, you, you, it, it becomes, becomes like a wall that you can't see beyond because, uh, um, you know, the petition has it's built up a, a boundary between you and reality. Yeah. But um, what's uh, been the most challenging topic that you've talked about to people? Uh, actually, when I'm uh, going to conduct interviews, uh, Nathan, can you listen? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, actually, I, it's stuck from my side because of my internet or something like, like that. Uh, when I'm talking to people, I have to restrain those people from talking about religion, talking about politics, and talking about the issues. I just want to listen to people about themselves. So it, it's difficult for me to um, sort it out, uh, to summarize the people about their focuses, their experiences, their learnings, their journey, their life exposure. Uh, normally people uh, go stray from those factors that are not concerned with them. They start talking with the state, start talking about religion, start talking about uh, uh, society, start talking about uh, different bad things happening in the society, but they uh, least want to talk about themselves. They don't want to narrate the story about themselves. They want to talk about the society. They want to talk about the sound. So I found somehow difficult to those people who, whatever the question is, is talk about something that is surrounding by them, it's not within themselves. So I have to figure it out most of the time how to keep them focusing on themselves only. That's uh, interesting. You run into some people that love talking about themselves and you can't get them to talk about anything else. So that's an interesting problem. <laughs> <laughs> it might happen. <laughs> well, uh, coming to the topic of uh, space and everything, um, did you know that NASA was planning to send people to the moon in 2024? Um, not exactly. I know about it. Uh, but uh, I have listened about that uh, NASA is planning and somehow Elon Musk is planning about that to send the people in space and moon. But I don't know the exact dates. And I'm surprised why we are going in space. However, we have destroyed a lot of Earth over here. So we need to destroy over there. Well, that's an interesting uh, point. Um, whenever you talk about uh, destroying the Earth, I, I, um, you know, it makes a lot of sense to me whenever we talk about the impact on life, right? Like when you uh, cut down like a forest to build like lumber, or you uh, dig the minerals out of the the Earth, or you're putting waste in the river and is killing the fish. Uh, so I, I kind of understand, you know, like the damage we're doing to the earth when measured in impact and destruction to life. Now, if the moon has no life on it, um, how do you kind of equate those same terms? I mean, does that mean that we don't have to worry about destroying the moon or is it something other than life that we're really looking at? Um, so I, I guess maybe you can help me understand that a little better. Um, when humans stay at the earth, it was not as like as we are, are looking now. I hope so that it's much greener, much better environment, much cleaner, uh, much uh, beautiful surroundings with all about our ancestors having those we have the best foods, we have the natural organic foods all the time. But then we started revolutionize. However, we said that it's a progress. However, now the progress is returning back. We are going to 
square zero it's equal to zero uh, now the people are going towards permaculture it's all about natural things we are trying to focus on the organic foods and we are thinking that organic food is costly so we're going towards the nature houses within um, forest near forest near greenery areas we want to construct uh, green areas in our uh, homes in our surroundings to protect ourselves so we are now returning towards nature but initially it was not like that nature was all around us uh, uh, I think when I uh, when we people uh, human beings went to will go to moon, definitely they will find something other sides of the story. That if there is no life, but still there are a lot of things that can be explored. So being a human, you can't sit idle. Every time you have to think about it. Whenever you are sitting idle, not talking to someone, till your brain is processing about 50 to 60 ideas per minute and about 1000 um, i guess if i'm not wrong it's about 50 to 60 100000 ideas in a day a human mind process so how you can think about a man is sitting on the moon or having a house on the moon and he is not doing anything just enjoying the nature it's not possible human have to do something when they are they find the earth over there when they were find the minerals over there they are start testing about the minerals they are finding about the soil they might try to uh, try to suck water from the uh, space they might try to find out something that can be new thing for themselves but they can eat from them so sort, certain things can be happen so it's not a human being that can stay calm and without doing anything he will definitely do start something within those surface areas. It's my perception. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, humans change the environment in which they live, which is one reason why we have AC and running water and uh, you know um, indoor plumbing and uh, refrigeration and a whole bunch of other uh, things. But I. You know, you mentioned Elon Musk. Uh, did you know that Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, also has a space company? No, I have listened to it for the first time from you that Jeff Bezos has uh, have something other business than e-commerce. Before that, I thought that he has something ventures about Amazon or Kindle or something like that, or about the whole story. But uh, 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 for the first time, I have learned from you that he has also some space sort of company. And um, Jeff Bezos, uh, he says, uh, you know, Earth is the, the best place in the solar system for humans. It's the only place of that we know of that has life. And that uh, he wants to develop space to protect the life here on Earth and to basically take all those things that... Um, harm the earth, such as energy production. Think about all of the oil extraction, the oil transportation, refining, the, the burning of the uh, oil into the atmosphere, the waste and what have you. Taking like activities like that and trying to figure out some way to move those activities off of the earth into, into space and then make earth more of um, a reservation for um, humanity. And I was wondering, if you thought about our development of space as a way of protecting the earth, does that change anything for you? Does that make it more interesting? However, just, however Jeff Bezos have a greater mind than me, uh, but according to my perception for being a, an ordinary human being, I think that we have destroyed enough resources on the earth. Now we are trying to save earth by destroying the space destroying moon and other stars but in fact if something has destroyed then what what you want to reconciliate what you want to repair for it you have to make it out of it like anything is need repairance you have to make it clear on that spot like if earth needs repairance it's not about leaving all those things that are destroying them 
we have to figure it out why those things are destroying the earth human beings if we say that okay fine uh, we are moving all these things that are destructive to the space you can't uh, transport the whole universe production over there the complete earth cannot do so if you are going to transport some sort of area or some part of the industrialization production or something like that to the space what about the rest of the world whole world cannot transfer there so you need to have something to do with this planet uh, trying to move towards nature trying to adopt maximum resources within nature trying to avoid something that is destroying the nature like if we are constructing if we are utilizing uh, resources about fuels about gasification or all about that why we don't go that is the cleaner energy why we don't go about the electricity why we don't go towards the solar system uh, why uh, solar energy why we don't go about the energy from water why we don't go for the energy that can be omit uh, from the windmills so it's these are the pure resources so we have to utilize these natural resources without any destruction rather than we start moving something that can destroy another way i and i guess you know you talk about um like solar power which is a really great thing right i mean to think you can just create this panel put on the top of your house and during the day the sun shining on it and you get essentially free energy uh, you know um i mean you have the solar panel but once you put it up it like continuously generates uh, electricity which is like really cool um but you know the the problem with uh, solar panels on the earth is that you're only are going to get on average 12 hours of sunlight a day and then probably less than that when you consider clouds and and what have you um if you had the solar panel in in space in a orbit such that it would continuously uh be able to capture the sun's light essentially that would allow for you to to get 24 hour 7 day a week energy from that solar panel and then um then the next thing is how to you actually get it down to the earth and there's been some experiments done with like using microwaves and and what have you but um what do you think about the idea of mining the moon to get the materials that you need to make solar panels manufacturing the solar panels on the moon and then putting those in orbit around the earth to generate the electricity in my point of view why we need so much electricity we are making ourselves more lazy by using those we can make it more efficient energy efficient item energy efficient uh, tools like if microwave is using 250 volts why we need 250 volts it can be revolutionized why it can't be about uh, operated by 20 volts or 30 volts we need lowest cost of energy like it happens with the car most of the time when cars it's about 4 to 5 km per liter but now with uh, different electric cars and different uh, battery driven cars this uh, uh, is not needed so much fuel so we are saving the fuel so i think the uh, why we need so much energy so we are producing the energy that is much more enough for us and most of the time this energy we are using is increasing every month every year by every human being like if there are uh, one air conditioner in a home next year he might purchase three air conditioners but we have to make those air conditioners equivalent energy using as it was one in the last year because every day technology is advancement so we need to make those resources more viable it same like like that if you have 100000 income per month and on the very next year you have the same income whatever you do you will try to cut your expenses with the inflation rate you have to make yourself within those 100000 rather than you are trying to learn from other things that why i should go for 150000 200000 
you have done for the whole year and you haven't increased your salary or your income so you just try to learn living within those 100000 for the next year and if it's not increasing then for the next year then you are going to try to rob something from the other person's home uh, digging from the moon i think it's a robbery you are living on the earth and trying to figure out something from the moon you just stay at home like you are living in a certain way or form if you are such creation uh, then then the divine should send you to the moon not to the earth you are here for the earth for living earth for uh, using the resources of earth not using the resources of moon this is my perspective oh i maybe if we uh take a look at the very long term and then kind of track back uh we can explore this idea from a different perspective it's difficult to say exactly what will happen inside of our solar system in the far future but astronomers have made observations of you know millions and millions and millions of other stars and have seen a pattern of those stars that are similar to our star that after the star gets to a certain age it uses up its fuel expands out and that in several billion years from now our sun is expected to use up its fuel uh to expand out and to essentially destroy uh you know the the first three planets uh that go around it including the earth now uh when that happens if humanity is only on the earth you know that's the end of all of life and and everything um do you think uh i mean what what do you think about that i guess I think uh the connection may be frozen. It looks like you're on mute. Hmm. Oh. No worries. I'm okay. Okay. Um, so, so you were asking several, something? Yes, in several billion years our sun is expected to um uh destroy the earth because it would be at the end of its life. And I was just wondering uh what you thought about that. If I mean if if humanity is only on earth at that point uh and all the life that's on the earth would be you know destroyed and wiped out at that point uh and i was just wondering if that's something we should take steps to to avoid uh nathan i don't ab- uh, know about your beliefs do you believe in harmageddon or something like that end of the world um i believe the end of the world is avoidable if we all work together to avoid it it's not possible uh, whenever you are claiming something like it's my opinion whenever you are claiming something like you are claiming towards the mount everest when you have climbed the mount everest then wherever you will go how much you will stay over there you may stay a few minutes few hours and if you are so much resistant resilient you may stay for a few days but then you have to return so if everything is going towards the peak then it's going towards destruction destruction if you are going towards inclined then you move towards decline so if the world is going to make such things and if you think that the uh, sun will destroy the earth eventually it would be happen at the end uh, and most most of the things that if me and you Uh, have gone from the earth me uh, you have died then i think that for us earth is ended those people who will live 
he will find out their resources he will find out their solutions for me and you the earth will be finished on that day that when we stop breathing that's it yeah, i mean that that's true i mean just like kind of like the earth began whenever we were born everything before that seems like a, um some story exactly um so but the, if you look at how huge the universe is i mean we're as best we can tell we're on um a little the edge of a you know the outward part of a galaxy and there's like billions and billions of stars and you know trillions and trillions of other worlds throughout that place uh, and you know it just seems like uh, it would be a waste if we didn't try to explore and find out more about all these places that it's like this huge masterpiece that everybody's just focused on this little bitty micro dot in the corner as opposed to looking at the the exploring the the few the huge masterpiece it's like having a mansion with like you know a million rooms and everybody is like just wanting to stay in the first room they they landed in uh you know from that perspective uh, i mean what are what are your thoughts to that my thoughts are very simple and clear about me it's like you are on this earth for specific purposes specific roles like if you are a employee of an organization you have certain defined roles and when these roles are done you are not more required in that position you might be given another task another uh, opportunity another seat another um, you can say another job opportunity uh, but if you start exploring the things that what's happening with my boss room what's happening uh, with the general manager what's happening with the people who are staying out of the office it's not i think it's not your business you have to focus on yourself why you are here on the earth you are here for doing your duty try to do that duty find out that duty if you have done with that then it's okay you are enough for this earth and you if you haven't done those duties that uh, are supposed to be performed by you then i think that you need to learn more things uh, and uh, all the universe is created for certain reason for certain purposes maybe why i am creating why i have been creating i am trying to figure out this question first what is my role on the earth if i'm doing my role and i'm doing my duties i'm enough for being a human on the earth and if i'm not doing my duties and doing not my uh, my role on the earth then i don't concerned about the universe about the galaxies about the stars uh my view about humanity on the earth is suffering a lot might be in my neighborhood might be in your neighborhood there are people who are suffering from hunger maybe i and you don't know about them our purpose on the earth to feed them to help them to give them some sort of advice to heal them to love them to respect them it's the ultimate purpose of humanity human must serve humans whatever the thing is that it's divine nature i don't no i i understand what you're saying I, and just to kind of um sort of uh, probe a little bit about some of the things that you brought up uh you mentioned that it's important that we focus on just our duty and making sure that that's right and not to kind of look out beyond that and some people would uh you know have the viewpoint that okay everybody in my house is uh fed and is taken care of so my duty is finished and then you have some people that say well everybody on my street they're fed and they're taken care of so my duty is finished and some people say oh my entire village or city is taken care of and everybody's fed and everybody's doing so 
and my duty is done and I don't need to worry about the people in other cities. And some people look at their province or state and say, you know, oh, everybody in my state's finished, but I don't care about the other states. And some people look at their country and uh, what have you, but it seems on, like you, you almost uh, say both uh, things. On one hand, we should just focus on just the part that's our duty. But on the other hand, we should focus on everything as being our duty. And I, I was wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. Uh, it's your duty to help yourself and to help others. Being a human, when you're born, it was your first duty to help yourself first. If you are hungry, you can't feed the hunger. If you don't have the cloth, you can't give cloth to anyone. First of all, you must have bread in your pocket to feed the hunger. You must have cloths other than your basic necessity to give cloths to others. All the people who are living on earth or who are doing charity or all something stuff, they are doing it because they have certain amount of uh, money, amount of food, or something like that for themselves first. And then they are start doing it for the other. If a beggar on the street try to do welfare for this street, he can't do because he himself don't have house, don't have food, how he can welfare for the people. So I think that ultimate duty of every human being is to help others. But if a person don't have certain thing in himself, like if I have no money in my pocket, not a single penny, how can I give amount to you for welfare, for business, for food? So it's definitely first you have those money. So first you work for yourself, try to learn how I can do for the others with those resources that you have acquired, not about those resources who are in your surroundings. The people who are doing any sort of things like welfare or charity or something, if they don't have the money, they are trying to collect the money from the people who have the money. So then they are helping those who don't have the money. So try to figure it out that what, why you want to do something and how you can do something. If you find it, why and how, I think that's enough. Try to figure out your solution first, your problem figure it, figuring out, and then your problem can be attached same as with the other persons. Like if I have some sort of disease, how I can tackle it, and if other person have the same disease, how I can help him for tackling those diseases. But initially, I have to understand how to tackle it. For myself, knowledge is first. If I'm going to help others without my knowledge for that per particular thing, it's useless and I'm going to destroy everything. First need to serve yourself, then start serving others. First, learn yourself, then start teaching others. First, start feeding yourself, then feed others. First, dress yourself, and then give dress to others. It's my thinking. Um, and how do you know once you've uh, reached that, that transition point between taking care of oneself versus taking care of others? Like... I mean, obviously, uh, some people could uh, this... eat just enough uh, to uh, meet their, uh, their needs, but they still might have a little hunger. And there's other people that can eat a whole bunch. Uh, and in reality, that would be enough to feed them plus uh, some other people. Exactly. This is called humanity. This is called divine thought. That whenever you think about yourself, you start thinking about others. This is divine thought. And not every person is blessed with them. Every person have certain aspects of it doing only for you. You might notice that some people are so 
misers or something like that they are not doing something even for their families as well not their mm-hmm. children if they have lot of money they never waste they never expend spends their money for their children even and after they have died their children start fighting for their money for that money so it's divine thinking that you got the knowledge how to earn money and how to spend it a lot of people try to learn these thing that how to earn money but how to spend money is an art that most of the people try to gather resources try to uh, capture all the things but they even don't know how to spend those resources they don't have good dresses to wear they don't have good shoes to wear even they don't have good car to travel however they have lot of money because they can now how to earn money not don't know how to spend money so it's a different perspective it's about attitude building yeah yeah i know uh, it's uh, difficult um uh, to to spend money effectively in a way that actually improves uh, your life and society um so i know that you were talking about um uh, we need to take care of the things on this earth um i was wondering uh, do you do much traveling like uh do you go to other countries and um like uh, for holiday what do you do if i go to other country for holiday mhm i mean like uh, what do you do for holidays what's what's like vacation and and that type of thing what's your usual thing uh according to my resources uh till the date i don't have so much money to go to other country because uh, it need lot of resources so within my capacity i have no financial resources as such uh, but i used to go to different cities in my country those are so beautiful so lovely and uh, natural so uh, it's there as vacations however for the last 4 uh, to 5 years i haven't availed any vacations i'm doing work continuously and i have some sort of craze for doing something that i'm doing it without day and night and nothing else even before pandemic i used to say people that i don't have any sunday i have only monday in my life mm. i used to work throughout throughout the week throughout the month throughout the year it happened uh, about 2 years ago that i start working crazily some th- some uh, things have make myself going extra miles i have gone to certain uh, certain attitudes like uh, nowadays i am doing something like that uh, that initially i started with doing one interview daily as you are doing but now i have gone up to seven interviews daily it's about four to five hours daily in front of screen making schedule talking to people having interviews talking different personalities so something has happened to me for the last 2 and 3 years that i'm working beyond my capacity i don't know why it's happened but uh, if the person would think that he's tired of us doing something i even not caring anything i start doing it and whenever i started it's feeling like i'm challenging myself i have to do it every day whenever every month i set a new goal that i have to achieve this and then i start competing within myself and whenever i achieve the goal next month or next year i have set another goal that's higher than that so the process is continue i don't know where is the exact destination that's uh that is awesome yeah one thing about my project is it has a clear end date you know uh 1600 and uh 25 days from now I'll be done. <laughs> Great. So uh that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's one thing that I I like uh it it'd be difficult to uh um, have a project with the outer end date because you don't know if you're quitting too early or too late or you know should you push through or what have you. So that's that's good. But let's say it was um 
safe and affordable to go on a, vac a holiday to space, like to be able to see the Earth from above. Um, I was wondering if that's something you would consider doing, assuming it, it was as expensive as uh, traveling to another city in your country. I don't know if a lot of people are doing and they have certain stories that are impressive, then I might consider it. But if the things are going so expensive, then I would prefer to travel through my country. My country is much more beautiful. Yeah, I know there's so much to see here on Earth, right? The oceans and the seas and the mountains and the rivers and the deserts exactly. and the forests and the, the ice areas and the everything. That's me. Well, um, was there something you wanted to talk about that we didn't uh, get a chance to? Uh, sorry, I couldn't get your question. Oh, um, so th those are pretty much the three questions I ask. Uh, you know, did you know that we're going to the moon in 2024? What do you think about space? And if it was safe and affordable, would you be interested in going? But if there's other topics you would like to discuss, um, I'm happy to discuss those too. Uh, I wish I would love to see 2024 whenever the people are going to space and then I would love to interview them and ask about their experiences. I wish. Yeah, um, me too. Well, I thank you so much for your time today and it was a pleasure talking to you today and then the previous time that we talked. and. I look forward to uh, seeing some more of your interviews and staying in touch. It's all my pleasure and it's really nice talking to you as usual. You're a beautiful human being and beautiful soul and uh, hats off to you all you are working. It's amazing and definitely the people in the future will learn it how the people was thinking before going to moon. Well, thank you very much. You have a good rest of your day then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.